This is something special for you. The one thing I always say about Bam, and Bam is always going to be strong when it comes to that, is that Bam is the founding father of organization and, and, and knowledge. Mm. And that's something that Bam, can nobody take from Bam Bot. Right. Bam Bot has always, always been able to do that. From, from, from the dissolvement of the spades and the nomads and all the gangs back then and all the cats that he knew that he crossed line with through there. It's just funny how later on Bam was able to organize that and bring them together and make them up and big, make a masses out of it. No different than the movie Warriors when Cyrus was in the park cross time on the concourse and his whole dream was to bring in all the gangs together to unite them so they can be against New York. A, a masses is always going to be stronger than a few. And that, to me, that's the way I look at Mary. He brought the masses together. And if you look at what he's done now, then with Bam, and where Bam is at now, Bam's got the masses all across the world now. Everybody right. knows Bam. Zulu Nation is universal. There's right. a reason why it's universal. Because it's worldwide, it's global. Japan, Korea, Holland, Russia, Warsaw Pact countries that we fight against. We got a movement. <laughs> Ain't that something? Some, some, somewhere far, far away, and I've lived in these countries. I've served in the military in these countries, and I can tell you from first hand. Mm. They, follow, they follow our game sometimes more intense than we do. Mm. And sometimes know our stuff better than we do. Mm. And the Japanese are definitely like that. They're deep into our game with our sounds, and that's how they work. But BAM has had that universal global effect, which nobody can ever take from him. And so that's why he's probably the most well-known around the world when it comes to that. Right. Mm. So we would say that Bam Bada, Africa Bam Bada added knowledge to the game. He added, he added the he knowledge. He created a culture, is what he did. Right. He evolutionized. He defined a it. He defined and it he as a culture. That's right. Right. That's absolutely right. right. I agree with you on that. Right. And you know, some of the turn off, turn on to that was is the music in the park, right. listening to the beats. He's already exposing. Right. What he did was those beats that he was discovering. Right. He needed somehow to get them out and play them and put them together. Because remember, Bambada for a long time was about the beats. He wasn't really known for his mix. He mm. was known for his cuts and beats and the beats he discovered. Mm. Those other guys that were around him that started getting more into the cuts. Right. Kind of just all settled, you know, settled up in there. Jazzy J, Red Alert cats like that they came up who hurt on the other side of town right you know they all have their place in history you know right. it's no need for them to be competitive because it's a, it's all about the total culture and the history the of total the game. culture right. they are all godfathers or four or forefathers of the game and when we talk about it what people fail to realize is is that they are the forefathers of the game okay all right, so it's not about who did what. It's because they all made equal contributions in one way or another to the game. And that's what led to the game being where it's at today. People talk about 15, 26 century. I got guys that come all the way from Japan that I stay in touch with on Facebook that write me, that come all the way to the Bronx just to go to 15, 26 century to see if they run to Cool Herc and other guys that are up there and they have. Grandmaster Cavs, you know, mm. has greeted them. Mm. And things like that and spoken to them and they're just proud to be up in the hood to say that you know hey, I'm right here where it all started right you know and it's funny because when I got people that come see me and they talk that to me I said that you know what if that impresses you then you got to be impressed because right down the block from my house you got the home of the Universal Zulu Nation where Bam Bada started everything at the Bronx River Community Center mm. so if you want to talk history then then you got to put Bam in his place too because that's where it started and that's where it grew from Right. And that's universal now. That's a global grind right. for BAM. BAM is always globally accepted when it comes to the game. But we would agree that the whole culture started in Bronx still I would say with Mario. Like, I would say that it was Mario because he had the system right. that nobody else had. So couldn't nobody just go out and replicate it. But then, you know, once he started doing that and guys started getting in cool with him, then eventually guys started putting their pieces together and getting on out there. And it's like a culture right. when you're a DJ. Right. And what happens is you get your following. And everybody was getting their following and growing. And once it caught on and your name got out there, you know, people started gravitating. Oh, well, Herc is playing. That's my man. I know what's there. I'm going to that jam. Right. Or Bam is playing. Right? right. So you go, you got that following. Right. And when you look at that following, it's always you're going to see a lot of the same faces. They're loyal to you. That's how loyalty becomes. That's how Zulus get developed. That's how Zulus become loyal. And 
now are grown men now breeding up youngsters now into the culture, into the game, teaching them about the elements of life and everything else that composes it. And Bam still cultivating and touching young lives and raising them up with that mentality. Right. It's an ongoing process that never ends. Right. You know, knowledge is the key to success. It's also the key to growth. If you can't shed that knowledge on somebody, then you can't be successful. So what would you right. say that the gangs, the gangs diminished in the Bro in this area, the Bronx? When would you say that the, the gangs turn to organizations? They yeah. diminish in the sense of being called gangs, but they turn into organizations. Organizations, you know. And then that's where I have to roll the drum and introduce you, Bambada, right there. Bambada. After the spades and all that broke up, you understand what I'm But that's when organizations came in place, started to put together, Bam came in, put it together. And next thing you know, eventually formed this organization. So Bam, I definitely, I definitely would have to give Bam a lot of credit for organizations and things of that nature. Right. He's always been a great, uh, uh, you know, a great influencer and a great leader of cultural, and cultural enrichment and knowledge, you know, to young minorities and opening up to other things that that we didn't know. You know, his trip to Africa, which enlightened him, and he brought back that knowledge and he made it a global grind. That's a global grind right there. He made it a business. He made it an industry. He made it. I call it a global grind. Right. Because it's it's worldwide now, and it's taken care of him ever since. You know, the big thing was is you know clicks, crews. You know, you started with the little crews, but really the crews turned to organizations. You know, that's what it was about. You know, and then when people really got into crews, crews had a purpose. They were grinding. They were sticking up. They right. Were doing, they were doing a certain things. Right. But organizations, organizations were the key to the crews. When, you know, cats just met each other. They formed up to do their little side, side things. And, uh, but the organizational thing, and Bam, uh, Bam to this day formed the biggest organization, and it's still in existence. Right. And that's not going to change anytime. anytime right. Soon. That's history. That's that's a building block. That's a foundation block. That is solid in the ground, and it's not going nowhere. Zulu. So you know, Bam. Bam, I give, if I'm looking at hip hop history, mm -hmm. the credits I give to Bam is, I know Bam for his music, when it comes to cuts, beats, and finding those those beats and, and, and records and digging through the crates. Yeah. You tell me who, name somebody you know that's famous for digging. Bam Bot is the number one person I would say that was always famous for digging in the crates. Yeah. Who would you give her credit for? Herc and the Herculoids. Herc and the Herculoids. <laughs> and the Herculoids. I always know Herc for the Herculoids forming up the school, but doing those cross-town jams in the parks out there and getting the word out out there. But, um, you know, yes. he was like the equivalent uh, of BAM and organizing. Like my man Chuck, you know, my man Chuck has been a a, 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 a crate runner right. for BAM and for Herc. Right. To this day, as a grown man, they still call him to come and run errands and stuff like that. No, oh, yeah. He's most trusted. He's most trusted. Mm. So they trust him with uh, uh, any of that. Any of that. Down with Jazzy J, you know, with Red Alert, Bam Bada, Who Hurt, all of that. Chuck, my man Chuck, that's why I introduced him. Right. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck been a runner and, and, and been faithful to the game since. That's why I told you Chuck's a walking, a walking book in cycle, like an encyclopedia. I got much respect for my man Chuck Freeze. Yeah, he used yeah, to do, yeah. Come Chuck Freeze. Him, Sundance, let him rest in peace, you know. I put a picture up of Sundance yesterday. Oh, yeah. Eric, the man, all of them out in the park. But, and Sundance was the first person that died because of the respiratory disease that was created from the 9 11 bombs. And he, um, his sister, and his sister led, um, is the one that led the charge to get the reparations, the payments to the families mm. um, that lost. You know, he was working in buildings or around yeah, security. He was doing security. My best one of my other good friends, Robert Morris, was the one that took care of him when he got real sick. He got him in the apartment, paid his rent, fed him, took care of him, and everything almost to the day he died. Mm. And took care of him. So that's how tight we were growing up. That we were all real tight and tight and knit. And there was a look out there. So my man Robert Morris, Paul Robbie. Um, Robbie looked out for him big time. Make sure that when he became sick, you know, just going through his things with his marriage. And mm -hmm. Robbie still looked out for him and took care of him. There's yeah. a lot of history there, you know. When we went ahead and uh, went to his funeral, which is right here on um, South Avenue at the little church right there on Lafayette, across from Monroe Projects and the little uh, supermarket that's here, the cleaners, right off the corner of Soundview and Lafayette, this little Baptist church there. That's where Sundance ended up having his funeral. 
Mm. And bam, them came. There must have been about 15, 20,000 people that came, mm. that came through there. So I after 9 11. Yeah. And I was right there. I was right there with the family. And, you know, it still wasn't open. And I remember when Bam came in, you know. Mm. Bam came in, you know. Yeah. He was real blessing with the hand. And yeah. And everything. And started seeing guys that I hadn't seen in 20, 30 years. Right. But that, that, that funeral there brought together a lot of people in the community mm. that hadn't been around. And it brought the hip hop game right. to each other. A lot of the founding fathers of this area that knew him and everything else, right. they all came through. Right. Very good. Mm. So, you know, as much as we look at our community, our community is a massive staple when it comes to the hip hop game, to the culture, you know, to the influence, to the way it dresses, you know, to the way we dance, everything. I mean, you know, this little south, surrounding south, the south, the southeast and the south Bronx, you know, very, very interesting for us when it comes to the hip hop game. Right. You know, all the founding fathers, the majority of them, the majority of the game, developed out of here, spread until they went all the way across the country down into the west coast and south coast and we had all this other new stuff in mind. And then right here. But we right can't here. agree Mario started. Mario, Mario was the one that laid out the music outside and drew the interest for everybody to want to play music outside right. and draw crowds and everything else. Right. I would definitely have to say that Mario was the one that laid the stage. He might not have been all scratch, he might not have been all in the mic, Right. But he laid the basic principle and stone down to the foundation, Jeez. which led to the enhancement of right. what we call hip hop. Everybody today. else added on different flavors. Everybody enhanced right. what, he was, what he was trying to do. They enhanced it and made it into the hip hop culture.